uh, here in Waco in that Baylor has hired their new offensive coordinator. It did not take long. It is uh, former Cal, now twice former Cal offensive coordinator, but also Texas A&M, West Virginia, and former Texas State head coach Jake Spavital. He is uh, on his way to Waco to join Dave Aranda's staff. Dave Aranda will be uh, is scheduled to be here with us on the show tomorrow uh, in studio, so we will ask him about that. I'm not sure about uh, Jake Spavital's availability at this time. Uh, so if you're wondering if we're going to have him on, we don't, we don't know yet, uh, but we are certainly working on it. But Craig, your thoughts on Jake Spavital, the hiring at Baylor, it is a departure from the offense that they've been running for sure. Uh, yeah. And that's what they needed. Uh, they didn't need to be doing the same thing that got them to three and nine this year and to six and seven a year ago. And it wasn't just the offense that got them there. The defense played their part as well. Special teams even contributed, chipped in, uh, where they could seemingly, uh, you know, you look back at last game, couple missed field goals, you know, things like that. Everything at one point or another issue for the Bears. But the offense to me was the the side of the ball where, you know, that's not Dave Aranda's specialty. And he did need to go outside. Whereas with the defense, he can say, okay, I'm going to take this bad boy over. And if we're going to, you know, sink this thing, then I'm at least going to be at the, the wheel for it. But offensively, um, you knew you needed to shake up there as well. That's not your expertise. Where do you go? Where do you turn to? And there were certain ideas of what they needed. And, you know, uh, an up-tempo style of offense was, I think, right there at the very top of the list and, and something a bit more flexible and something a bit more exciting and something that, you know, guys would want to play in or be able to transition to and, you know, make a quick impact through, you know, transfer portal additions and things like that. Uh, the guy has plenty of familiarity with the state, of the, the state of Texas, as you outlined. I don't think that's always a need, but I do think that's a benefit, especially when, you know, you're going to have to go out there and in the transfer portal, sometimes a lot of it's like just getting guys to come back home, you know, so... Mm. Um, what relationships does he possibly have from his previous stops, but also just the, his time in the state? What connections does he maybe have to bring in a receiver who's across the country but looking to get back closer, you know? So um, got a lot of different relationships, uh, a lot of different knowledge gathered from these past few years. And I think probably his peak was, you know, the A&M ride and then to the Texas State job when he first got it. Obviously, that didn't work out in the long run. G.J. Kinney's there, but he did a nice job at Cal. Um, you're going to look at the stats and not be blown away like, oh, it's a top 15 offense. It's, it's not that, but it is something that uh, – gives you hope that they can turn this thing around and you know be a bit more productive, be able to score 30-plus points a game on a regular basis. And if you can do that, then I think you look at their, their games played this year, and that should help. It's not going to guarantee anything, but it should be you know a nice step forward. So a big hire. I thought that Matt Wells was a very intriguing candidate. Mm -hmm. I thought for a second there that that just seemed like the most logical choice, especially when you're talking about wanting some head coaching experience, but Spavital has that. Uh, so, yeah, he checks a lot of boxes. Um, and I'm excited to see what he can do and where they start to you know, maneuver in terms of what they want to do with this offense and what that's going to look like. I actually uh, coached a game against Dave Aranda a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when Baylor had, uh, has had Texas get on the schedule before, you know, in the years before G.J. Kenny, this is, of course, G.J.'s uh, first year uh, there in San Marcos. Uh, I... Um, I, I did a top five the other day, Craig, and I mentioned Jake Spavital in it. It was that was it, really well received by Baylor fans. It, wasn't it? it was not well received by Baylor fans. I and I'll tell you this: I don't think that there's a name short of you know um, someone like from the Georgia staff or like that that was going to get people excited. Like Will Stein, from yeah, Oregon. like Will Stein, yeah. like that would have been like, oh yeah, they got it. But you know, but that was that would have been unrealistic. You know, like like I, I do think that. It's funny how um, oh Dana Holgerson just get Dana Holgerson to be the offensive coordinator you know the like, all right I mean you know the like, guy just got fired for a job he you know he left West Virginia for is he really gonna jump back in that fast I, I, you know um, he's got a massive like he doesn't have to do anything like you know there it's just kind of a different thing Jake Spavital is an interesting choice and look he here you mentioned also recruiting through the portal Craig if you remember. Um, he did. I mean, I think I don't know how badly long term it hurt his relationship with the Texas high school coaches because I'm sure they were mad about it at first. But he did say, you know, he did have that one year where he recruited completely out of the portal. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not what Baylor needs to do this year, like that plan. But they do need to be in the portal heavy. So, it <laughs> seems like you've got a guy who's done some of the things that you need him to do, and you 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 don't have like this is not a. Let's see how this guy can be. You know, Mike Gundy can hire a Division II defensive coordinator and bring him up a little while because 
you know, he's got... He's playing he, in his he, second Big 12 title in three years. Yeah, exactly. He has that luxury. Yeah, yeah, so he can do that. Dave Aranda is three and nine. Like, he needed to do something like, okay, there's a lot of boxes he has to check. We have to fi- find an offense that's going to work for whatever personnel we currently have on the roster that we think we're going to keep. Uh, also... Uh, to point towards personnel that we want to add to the roster and what we're going to recruit to should this all work out going forward. He's got a year to do this. So that's why, to me, Jake Spavital makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, yeah, maybe he pissed off some Texas high school coaches a few years back when that was the approach. It obviously didn't work out well. I mean, nothing ended up working out all that well for him at Texas State, which is why, you know, that uh, that tenure ended, you know, as, as the way that it did. But... Um, that's how they're going to have to get better. This they're not going to go into the uh, into the regular recruiting circles, and we're going to get our eighteen freshmen and our two JUCOs and our you know whatever, and then we're going to you know focus. No, they they have to be in the portal. That's the mm-hmm. only way to fix this thing is to be in the portal and to then develop the guys that you already have on your roster. And sure, there might be a sprinkling of young guys that could come in right away and help you in certain uh, fashions, but for the most part, like. I think your team hinges on the portal now. I mean, it hinges on what decision you were going to make here at offensive coordinator and also on what Dave Aranda will be able to do with the defense. But in terms of plugging the talent holes that they have, that's all going to be portal, uh, in my mind at least. And so, yeah, they're going to be very active there. But just in general, you know, that's just part of the deal is getting the talent on campus now. And they have a little bit more, uh, you know, room to focus on that now because they've got a big decision out of the way. This is the big decision. We know Dave is is going to take over the defense. Uh, Matt Powell is going to stick around and help out with that. But the other question then became, okay, well, who's going to command the offense? We now know it's Jake Spavitol, so that's a big box that's checked off. And, yes, now you focus on recruiting in the portal and, and doing whatever you can there to, to bring in some talented players to uh, help out the guys that you – are retaining like a Dawson Pendergrass and the rest kind of remain to be seen at this point. But yeah, I mean, I think it's good news for wide receivers. I think it's good news for uh, your quarterbacks, which right now is basically Sawyer Robertson and RJ Martinez. So they kind of needed third quarterback at this point. So that's part of the to-do list. And uh, you know, what remains to be seen kind of the wide ranging effects. I mean, for one, is he quarterbacks coach? And if so, what does that mean for Sean Bell? Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's one of the first things that I wondered because Spavitol's, you know, typically the quarterback's coach. So um, that makes you uh, think that there's, you know, more moves to come and how exactly that will unfold. I don't know, but he, you know, he's had success. He mentioned his couple of stints at West Virginia. Um, he's he's been all over the place in in terms of uh, you know being around kind of the state of Texas in the Big Twelve. So I think he's you know a guy that just makes a lot of sense. He checks a lot of the boxes, and you know hopefully he's the the right guy at the right time at the right place. And for Dave Aranda's sake, he better hope so as well. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I I think that him arriving is not necessarily good news for Eric Mateos if he wanted to stay because. That's a completely different – like, you're talking about big line splits and, and, and a lot of different things you're going to do with the offensive line. And usually the offensive line coach is the first assistant that they bring on, um, you know, that or a quarterback coach. So we'll see what it means for the – it could mean a lot of different things for the entire offensive staff. We, we don't yeah. know. You I mean, know this like, is what we know is that yeah. um, Eric Mateos wants to stay at Baylor, yeah. but he's also – smart enough as all the other coaches are to understand the situation. So yeah, I don't know anything right now, but you can put two to two, two and two together. Like for example, the fact that Spavitol is a quarterback's coach, like, I don't know if that's great news for Sean Bell, but we'll see. Um, obviously Sean's a, a different case in that he's a big time Baylor alum and former football player. And it was a big deal. And Matt rule hired him a few years back. Um, but yeah, offensive line wise, if you're Eric Mateos, is this a, a fit? Is this a fit that you can adjust to, or is Spavital going to want to make a change there as well? That's all I think up in the air. I mean, some of the guys are going to stay on, like they're not going to completely wipe the, the entire offensive slate clean, but yeah, there are a couple of areas where you're like, huh, does that squeeze somebody out? Um, that's just the, the cold, hard nature of business, not just college football business, but business in general. Um, so we'll see on that front. Don't want to speculate too much but you can kind of you know like I said put two and two together in some cases uh so yeah um we'll uh we'll see there but more changes are coming yeah this isn't the last decision to be made or the last coaching hire to be made most likely this offseason 
Yeah, I think there's there's going to be different things going on there. And I, look, I think it's an interesting hire, and I would like to tell all those people on the board, ah, ha, 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 I was right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's Garrett can tell you that when I got the news, that's not exactly how I put it. No, uh, no. a little mild there. <laughs> that was that was the polite way of saying mm-hmm. it. Um, 